This is currently the color of the 2000 R1 project bike. This isn't factory blue and personally I think it's ugly. So today we are going to try and vinyl wrap the R1 to look something more like this. I have already attempted a few smaller pieces to get an idea of what it takes to vinyl wrap parts and to get an idea of what the bike will look like. So to wrap this R1 we had to pick up a few things first because I have never wrapped anything in my entire life. So this is the look that we are trying to achieve excluding the red seats and the red bits here. But red front mudguard, rear hugger and belly pan and these bits here. But we want a white tank, white upper fairings and tail. First up, we obviously needed some vinyl. So here in the red, we've got some Avery Denison Carmine Red Glass. We've got three meters of this because I was told it takes about five meters to wrap a bike. So I've got two meters in total to play with and mess up. And in the white, we've got some 3M Gloss White. So this is 3M, this is Avery Denison, different manufacturers. I'm told the 3M is easier to work with, but so far I actually prefer the Avery. We also picked up some of this wrap prep spray that's pre-mixed so you can't mess it up at all. As well as an Avery Denison squeegee and a Black & Decker heat gun. We didn't have a heat gun, we didn't want to spend too much money so this is a fairly cheap one but it gets the job done better than a hairdryer. So this is sort of the first look at what the color combination on the R1 is going to look like. I wrapped the left hand side of the belly pan first and as you can probably see it's not perfect there's a join here because I wrapped the whole thing and at the end here it tore so I had to redo this. As well as the bolt holes, they're not exactly covered yet, but we'll fix that later. Once a bolt's in, it shouldn't even be noticeable once we've touched it up. And at the top here, we've got the 3M White, which, as I said, in my opinion, was actually harder to work with than the Avery. But it came out really nicely. It took me two tries because I started laying it this way up, and it bunched up here, and it was too taut here. So I learned from that, and the next time I laid it flat across here, and then when we were finished pushed it into the vent. It made it much easier and hopefully that'll help me in the next few pieces. But anyway, today I think I'm going to try and attempt what people say is one of the hardest pieces, which is the tank. Because it's so round there's often a lot of bunching up, but we'll see with time. Because it's such an old tank it's actually quite square. It's not as angular and as round as our modern tanks like on the R6. So I think I could get away with doing it in one piece, but if I can't we're going to break it up into three sections. The top, this side, and that side. I also just wanted to say that I am by no means a professional rapper. This is actually the first time I've ever wrapped anything. So I have done a lot wrong. I'm gonna do a lot wrong, but I want to learn. That was the whole point of this. I want to learn how to vinyl wrap stuff. And I'm gonna share with you what I've learned to not do. But don't take what I say too seriously because I am not good at this whatsoever. So one of the first things you're gonna to want to do is whatever surface you're gonna work on, you want to clean. Because with something like a tank, you have a lot of excess vinyl. And with all of that excess vinyl laying on the surface, if there's dirt, it's just going to pick it up, ruin your vinyl, and the vinyl won't work or stick anymore. And then while you're cleaning, you're going to use your wrap prep spray or whatever you're going to use to clean alcohol to clean whatever you're going to wrap so that the vinyl sticks nicely to that when you get to that point. Obviously, you're going to need a good clean to start off with. So soap and water and get rid of all of these dirty bits like in the fuel cap here was. But we've given this a good wash with soap and water. So now we're on to the wrap prep because that's our last step before we're gonna actually wrap it. Once the tank is clean, we can start to decide how much vinyl we're actually gonna need. So we're gonna measure like this, see how much it is. For instance, from here to the edge is 75 centimeters and around that way it's about 80 centimeters. But I'm going to leave room for error because this is one of my first few times doing this. Plus taking into account the edges, the dips, all of that. So we're going to leave 10 centimeters on each side. That's probably too much for a professional wrapper. But for me, I'm hoping it's enough. So this is going to be the single piece that we're going to attempt to wrap the tank in. Ok 
Okay, so that didn't work whatsoever as most of you probably expected, but I had to try it anyway. The tank is just two rounds. So that basically means that the single piece tank wrap is not an option and we're going to have to try the three piece option, which means we had to pick up something else yet again. This is 3M knifeless tape. Now what it is, is basically a thin piece of tape with almost like fishing wire down the middle. So you lay your tape down, put your vinyl over it and then pull the fishing line out. And that cuts the vinyl exactly how you laid the tape. A precision cut, not like a knife. And it also doesn't damage, for instance, the tank. If you used a knife, it would be wavy and it would damage the tank. So let me get all this vinyl off and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna try and lay the knifeless tape. Unfortunately, I was really silly and I completely forgot to film what it looked like when the vinyl was still on. But basically what happened was it goes around here. So in this section, there was a lot of bunching up and a lot of wrinkles. And I spent probably about two hours just right here trying to work the wrinkles down and it just wouldn't budge. So all of this top was fine. As soon as it gets rounder, it's rounder than it looks apparently, it gets difficult. Before I went to work on the tank using this knifeless tape, I decided to at least get some practice with it first so that I didn't mess up the tank once again. And I decided to practice on this the front fairing and I know at the beginning of the video I told you guys I wasn't gonna do this red but this gave me a chance to practice using the knifeless tape and when we wrapped this in white there was also a lot of bunching up here so this gave us the opportunity to cut the wrinkles out and cover it and I'm actually really glad that we did because it needed this color I saw it in full white and it wasn't that good but now it's red I really like it I'm gonna change my mind once again and hopefully this is the last time I know I've changed it twice already but basically I did this with the red and I really like the red. I wasn't expecting to have red on it, but it looks way better. So now with the tank, instead of doing three white pieces, I've decided to do five pieces and have a red stripe down the middle of the tank. I think that'll make it easier to wrap and it'll add the red in which I really liked here. I've also done the front mudguard, which I think looks really cool. And I used a lot of knifeless tape, so I'm getting better with that. And I think I could pull off a stripe down the middle of the tank. So that's what we're gonna try and do now. I just laid the knifeless tape to get an idea of what the stripe would look like and where to lay what pieces of vinyl. So this is what it currently looks like. These two will cut for the red stripe, but at the very end, at the moment, I'm going to do this section. So we're going to start with a piece here. That's this piece of vinyl. So white goes here. Then we'll pull this one, lay another one. Put some more white vinyl here. Do the same on the other side and then when we finished all of that we're only going to do the red stripe so that the red stripe is on top and looks the best And this is what the finished tank looks like among some of the other finished pieces and it's almost starting to look like a red and white motorbike and not this ugly blue anymore. I'm really happy with how it came out. The knifeless tape worked perfectly. It got a really clean and straight cut. But now we have a few more pieces to put back on the bike. We can put the fuel cap back in. As you saw I put the lights in and the windscreen on. So it's slowly coming together. Another thing that I forgot to mention was how much work actually went into these fairings to get them ready to wrap. If you remember from the reveal video, there were indicators stuck to the side of the tail here, which I really didn't like, so I wanted to get rid of. So what we did was fill this hole that was drilled to run the cable through. We bought a body filling kit for motorcycle fairings. So what it is is basically this is powder. Then you put the powder in the crack or the hole you want to fill. You pull the glue over it which sets the powder and then you sand it down until it's smooth. So as bad as this looks, it's actually really smooth and once it's wrapped, you won't even notice it. 
We did the same with quite a few other panels. I don't know if you remember, but there should be a clip overlay in here of the right hand side of the belly pan that actually had holes all the way through because the bike had been dropped. Not to mention a different color paint. So there was a ledge. We sanded all of that down, filled it with the body filler. And if you look at the other side, you can actually see where the holes have been filled. These are both holes. But now that the wrap's on there, you can't even see. It's as smooth as it was when it was from the factory. So this is the yoke of the R1. And as you saw in the reveal video, this was really scratched, really scuffed. All the paint was coming off. And with the ignition being on it, it's got these security bolts, so you can't take this off. So respraying it wasn't really an option. But I do have some carbon weave vinyl that I decided to wrap this with. So in the shadows, it looks pretty much stock. You can't really see the carbon weave. But once it catches the light, it looks really cool, it looks carbon, it hides all the scratches, and it looks much neater. So that's another thing we fixed just with vinyl. Well guys, that is a wrap for this video. I am really sick of wrapping at this point, and it's not even finished yet. Wrapping is quite a lot more difficult than I expected it to be in the beginning, which was silly on my part, but I think I can say that I have almost got the hang of it, at least for simple pieces. A motorbike was probably a silly place to start, but I did it anyway, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And now that it's starting to look better, I'm actually keen to ride it for once. When it was looking big, ugly and blue, I pretty much had zero desire to ride it. Which is strange, but now that it's starting to look red and white and quite a bit newer, I'm really keen to get this thing on the road and to ride it. And the other big news is we actually took the next step on the wheels. Yesterday I went and dropped the wheels off for powder coating. So the day that this video goes live, I should be picking up the wheels and starting to put the bike back together and getting it back on its wheels, which will be really exciting. I cannot wait to ride this bike. But if you want to see what the bike looks like at the very end of wrapping, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on a video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.